Hello everyone, Nupkex here today. We're going to be discussing one of the top topics on the Heroes of the Storm subreddit today, ominously titled, The Death of the Melee Carry Roll. If you're watching this video, by the way, giving some examples, I will be referencing the finals of the mid-season brawl, which happened just last weekend. If you want to avoid spoilers for that, then don't watch this video until you've watched it. So yeah, the question is basically, are melee assassins even viable anymore? Does anyone actually pick them, or are they just totally useless and outshadowed by other heroes? Post begins, the other day in anti-hero stream, he discussed the dearth of solid, reliable, and playmaking melee assassin players in EU. Now, I actually agree with this. I think this is very true. We don't have any melee assassin-only players anymore. I'll come back to this and explain why near the end. Also worth noting, we like Antihero, he's a really good player, better than me, and he's got a lot of great insights into the game as well. However, the post continues, and certainly some of the comments down below continue. But there's something else that we noticed. No one is running melee anymore. Not really. You'll see Malthiel and Thrall, which can poke and sustain, but few other bona fide- How do you even say that word? Bona fide? I don't know, melee heroes in the pro meta. The stars of teams are all on mages or ranged flex. More importantly, they're playing mobility or teleport heroes like Genji, Hanzo, Zeratul- Phoenix or Tracer. The melee role itself has been replaced by mobile, reliable damage dealers and off-tank bruisers. The top rated comment on the post with 207 upvotes says, IMO the melee assassin is dead because of the high popularity of ground effects and displacement. Another comment says there are three reasons I believe melee assassins have seen a decline. One, the rise of hyper mobile characters, Tracer and Genji. This is true. Terror changes. Number two, and number three, the fall of Tyrael. These are all true actually, and they definitely contribute to some melee assassins seeing less play. Another comment says the reason melee assassins aren't used is because there's no point in running them when you get the same effect from using a second tank or bruiser. Another commenter says the problem is that these heroes are good, but other other heroes like Genji, Hanzo, etc. are always better. Why would you pick Thrall or Illidan or Ragnaros over Sonya, Murden or Artanis? Wait, you wouldn't pick Thrall over Artanis? What is going on? We're the true horde, that's a lie. If I had a choice between Thrall or Artanis, I'd pick Artanis every time. All right. This is giving me a headache. Salufus so comments, I don't get what you're saying. My Ev was high priority in MSB, Zeratul's a solid pick, Malty on Thrall, as you said, see lots of playing competitive, niche picks like Valyria and Alarak saw play and bans in MSB, and to a stretch, Greymane was the most played assassin for one year and he's half melee. Samuro and Kerrigan are kind of niche but occasional picks, the only ones completely out of competitive meta are Illidan, Butch, and Ragnaros. What a nice voice of reason. Well done, Stephalus. So, luckily for you guys, I sat down and got some actual data for us to look at to back up some of these arguments. I took the lower bracket finals, the upper bracket finals, and the grand finals uh, from MSB, so literally last Sunday and Monday, and uh, yeah, I looked at all the drafts, and let's see where Melee Assassins feature. Okay, game number one between Genji and Tempest. What do we see? We see Maiev actually going to be banned out. She's a melee assassin. And, oh, look at this. I'm uh, <laughs> right in the middle of the screen. We've got Alarak, a melee assassin, being picked up by Gen G. So there you go. Two melee assassins featuring in this particular draft. In the second game of Gen G versus Tempest, no melee assassins picked, uh, but we do have a melee assassin, Maiev, banned away. Jumping over then to Tempest versus Dignitas. To be fair, in the first two games they played, there was no melee assassins at all. But in game number three, hey, look what we have here. Who's this green guy? What's his name again? Um, that's right, Artana. Jumping over to Gen G versus Dignitas in the grand final. In the game number one, we don't see any melee assassins at all. Jumping over to game number two, we see Maiev, a melee assassin, actually first banned away. In game number three, we see Malthiel, a melee assassin chosen by Gen G. In game number four, we don't have any melee assassins to speak of. Game five, again, no melee assassins over here. And then game six, the final game, we have a Malthiel. So yeah, in other words, looking over all these games, we see there's actually melee assassins cropping up fairly frequently. Now, note, they're not in every single game, but they do pop up quite regularly. So I want to talk about Genji really briefly. Uh, there should be some of my Genji gameplay uh, in the background during some parts of this video, so you guys can enjoy looking at some of that. But the thing about Genji, I, I definitely would consider him kind of a hybrid melee assassin in, in some ways. Like, sure, he's a ranged assassin, technically speaking, but, I mean, he's level 4 talent if you're going E-Bills. That's all about getting to melee range, hitting them at the end of your swift strike. Shingen at level 13 with the Q build is all about getting into melee range as well, shotgunning people uh, in the face with your shurikens. And, and then if you go Dragon Blade, well, then you're very much in melee, uh, swinging away. He, you know, he's not like a you're the archetype of a ranged assassin, let's say a Vala. He's not like a Hanzo or a Chromie, someone who's very much at range. Genji's all about diving into the middle. And, and again, if you compare him to Vala, right, if you get took away Genji's ranged basic attack and said, okay, now he's daggers, and you can only stab people with a melee range basic attack, 
Genji would still be pretty viable, actually. Um, whereas if, if you took away Valor's crossbows and gave her a couple of daggers, um, the hero would be dead and unplayable. So yeah, I actually think Genji and also Tracer to a large extent actually play quite like melee assassins. Like they're kind of unique in that. So that's one thing to point out here. So is it a good or a bad thing that we don't have melee assassins in every single game? I actually think it's a really good thing. Why? Because I like the idea that there's a variety of different team comps that we can put together. Basically, every team is going to have a tank and a healer. That's fine. But then you've got three slots to play with. So, for example, look at this game. The game between Genji and Tempest. Genji, yeah, they've got a tank. They've got a healer. They've got a bruiser. They also have a mage, Li Ming. And then they have a melee assassin, Alarak. It's, uh, you know, that's one setup that you can have. Looking over at Tempest on the other side, they have a tank, Tyrael. They've got a healer, Malfurion. Then they're running two ranged assassins and a support. So it's a very, very different setup. Jumping over to Genji versus Tempest, game number two. Here Genji's running, yes, a tank, a bruiser, and a healer. Then they've got a hybrid melee type assassin with Genji, and they've got a sustained range damage healer with Sergeant Hammer. On Tempest's side, they've got, again, a tank and a healer. This time they've got a bruiser as well. They've got a sustained range damage healer with Phoenix, and then they've got a burst mage with Jaina. Jumping over to Tempest versus Dignitas. Again, Dignitas is a fairly standard comp with a tank, a healer, a bruiser, a burst mage, and then a hybrid melee assassin type character. Tempest is running, again, a very different comp. Yes, tank and healer. This time, though, they're running a melee assassin sustained range down a support in this game between genji and dignitas genji are running basically bruiser tank healer but then they're running two sustained ranged damage dealers for the most part that's broadly speaking what they are uh dignitas is running the support burst mage bruiser tank and then a support and as you can see from those illustrations from just the, the handful of about 10 or so games that we're looking at today you can see there's a vast variety of team comps that people can put together uh depending on the different maps depending on the different strategies Yes, we're nearly always building off that tank and healer baseline, but you can mix in all these other heroes and create all these different comps. And that means that melee assassins won't always be included, but it means there's great variety to the game. There's different styles of composition. I think that makes for interesting viewing. I think that makes for interesting playing. So yeah, I think that's a great thing. Of course, this does mean that in the pro scene, whereas before, back in the old days, you would have players that were pretty much dedicated to the melee assassin role. You simply don't have that anymore because you're not gonna be playing one every single time. So it is a change, but I don't think it's a change for the worse. And yes, at the moment, we have some melee assassins that are definitely out of the meta. We haven't seen much Illidan, we haven't seen much Kerrigan. But I mean, the meta changes all the time and the heroes go in and out. I think that's totally okay that we have some melee assassins that are out. I mean, if we look at just the grand finals, uh, we saw the Malthiel came through in several games. There you go, that's a melee assassin. So there's no real problem with the melee assassin role in total. We saw Maiev crop up quite a bit. We've seen some Thrall. Lots of melee assassins coming in. So to sum things up then at the end, going back to the original post, I actually think that first point that Antihero made is totally true. That we don't have a ton of these reliable playmaking melee assassin plays in EU. I think that's totally true because, well, <laughs> the game has changed. There's just more heroes in the game. There's more types of team comp. Um, so you just don't have melee assassins cropping up every single game. Um, I don't think that's a problem. The redditified version of this though, that melee assassins are totally dead, that they're gone. Yeah, sorry guys, that's just not true at all. Thanks for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, thumbs up, and I'll see you all again next time for more Heroes of the Storm content. Bye-bye.